Okay. Now, now Desmond, um, apart from passing that bill, mm. which he has said is not where we should be starting from, um, what should we be doing? What should government be doing? What should government be telling its people to ensure its own survival? <laughs> well, one question that we can ask ourselves, and if you, if you answer no to this question, then it means that you are in agreement with what must be done. And the question is, um, can anybody, any of us here, hold their breath for 10 minutes? No. No. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> you know, why can we not hold our breath for 10 minutes? Because uh, you know, sometimes I, I ask this question because I do a lot of lectures uh, with, with, with children and also just recently with uh, Lagos State Ministry of Environment. And, you know, you ask the question, why? And, Quite often, depending on the grade of the school, they'll tell you, oh, we need air, and the other schools will say, we need oxygen. And then the second question is, where does the oxygen come from? And again, they will finally tell you, yes, <laughs> it comes from the trees, it comes from the forest, the lungs of the earth. And this is why there is a very strong initiative, and one of the recommendations from the panel is that we should go very, very rapidly, very aggressively into forest protection, yes. particularly the tropical rainforest with its multi-layered canopy, which is the lungs of the earth, which the almighty God, our wonderful creator, has given us out of his benevolence, knowing that we require oxygen so desperately. It is quite a very important resource. We can't survive without it for 10 minutes. So, you know, yeah. So one of the first things we need to do is just take our forest protection very, very seriously. The Nigerian Conservation Foundation, on whose council I'm honored to sit, uh, has a program that was inspired by Chief Philip Asiodu that uh, we should go back to at least 25% forest cover. Right now, we're down to about 5 or 6% forest cover. So that's an immediate mm. issue Ooh. that can just be taken straight away while we start to get our heads around this reality which Prince has been expounding, that we need to go into clean energy systems. It's going to take a while because there's such huge interest involved. But eventually, we have to get ourselves around that reality that actually uh, the exhaust that comes out of your generator, the exhaust that comes out of your car is quite noxious. You couldn't keep a generator on in this studio inside this room for very, very long, could you? Because it's very, very noxious, it pollutes, and it is harming the atmosphere. So that's one of the major things. We, we, we just need to start protecting our forests and go back into the green. And there is an issue, sorry, yeah. Prince, the, 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 there is one issue that, uh, that we could have mentioned earlier, that one of the most negative effects of climate change that is affecting Nigeria right now is, is the insecurity that it causes. It is one of the major drivers of the insecurity in various regions. Because you can imagine, if you're in the northern area and you've lived in a place which was feeding your flocks, as we were mentioning about the, the cows and the pasture land, and it's all gone, and that village is now, you know, disappeared under the sand, you now become an environmental refugee that has no food, that has no water, and you become a madman that can strap all sorts of things around his chest and blow his. One of the <coughs> major drivers of insecurity in our country is the environmental degradation that has been driven by climate change. Well, let me also well, quickly add to what uh, Desmond has rightly mentioned. You see, in the UN system, there's what we call the Red Plus program. And luckily, Nigeria, which is the reforestation, uh, Nigeria also has benefited from the, the concept of the funding. Nigerian government is always doing what you call the, the, the Green Belt, which is for about 11 states. Mm. Unfortunately, part of that 11 state is affected by the crisis that you have at the moment. So there is a need for us to go back to the forest. All this idea of using um, wood to, to cook and so on, let us move towards the area of stove. Let us also move towards the area of, um, of well, I talk about the clean energy. Let me also emphasize the point that even if we move into this, the forest, uh, this issue of forestation and so on, there's an opportunity for us, which is the ability to be able to got, get what you call credit. This, you see, I, I want to run away from using the terminology or what people may not understand. There is a credit in our conserving 
Mm. This concept that we say is bad, because out of the soul of a bad man, you can find out that the um, human being has been able to learn that there is goodness in goodness. So basically, as much as we say climate change is a danger, it also has its own opportunity. Ethiopia, for instance, has benefited substantially from credit mm -hmm. arising out of protecting yeah, the forest. The forest. Mm. And we can do the same thing. I think only 16 organizations in Nigeria or thereabout has benefited from what you call the, the, the benefit of conserving the forest. The, 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 what you call them, um, the ability to get the best that is in terms of, um, uh, of money from managing this process very well. Mm. And I believe all of us, if we are disciplined, take Lagos State for instance, look at the, the effort on the transportation. Look at what has happened in the case of using waste. What you think may be waste are now being properly utilized into wealth. I was in um, Nairobi some few months ago when there was this international conference and uh, I think two young chaps from Nigeria came in and they gave a case study of what they are doing using um, um, transfer, um, cycle to be carrying waste. Mm. And we can, you can see clearly, you can mm. see what we're talking about. So basically what we are trying to, to, to say is that we can also create wealth from what you think is a challenge to us. Okay. The other no, no, aspect Prince, of which I think is also important Prince, we, is for us Prince, is to conserve we, we our energy. We, we have what to manage our time. Efficiency. We have to manage our time, to please. We have to manage. Um, do you think that the average Nigerian is adequately informed to be able to take all the steps that you're talking about? We're still burning bushes. We're still cutting down My answer straight away is, is no. So we and need so to what, do what something. What should be done? What needs to be done is that we need to move to where the people, local government. For instance, we, there is a need for us to incorporate the issue of climate change into our development plans, both in the local government, in the state, and in national. Because whether we like it or not, these are situations that are striking us in the face. And we also need to have what you call a climate resilient programs, which will also help us. So there is a need for education, there is a need for creating awareness. There is a need for investing in people, and people also must be disciplined. Shouldn't this investment be started when people are pretty young, when children are pretty In fact, let me give you a very simple young? example. I'm happy you raised that point. There is something we are working on. We hope by before, sometime, I think in August or thereabout, we are planning to take some young students who are on holidays out of Nigeria to somewhere neighboring West African countries. And the key issue we're addressing is how do you make them to start to see beyond their horizon? What is happening in Ghana? What is happening in other places? If what the Reverend Father in Kutonu, Zongai, um, Songhai Farm mm. was able to do, when this man wanted land, we couldn't give him land. Everybody now goes to that place to learn about agriculture. So we must start from somewhere. Let us incorporate this into our school syllabus. Let us also inc incorporate this, even in our churches. Mm -hmm. Let people know that this problem is on our neck. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. unless we do something, I remember um, um, Bishop Tutu of South Africa recently, in fact, his comment on this IPCC report was clear. Well, my name's sake. <laughs> <That's what laughs> yeah. You understand okay. me? So we, we please even our religious leaders yeah. must take it as a very serious issue. Okay. Okay. Because God has us manage my resources very well. Okay. Are we managing the resources well? That yeah. is a challenge to us. Okay. okay. That's not your final word. Yeah, just and an extension of to... what he said. You yes, know, please he do. Brought it, he brought it right down <laughs> to my topic now. He brought it into the spiritual realm. And all we have to do is just, you know, <laughs> obey God. Just obey God. Fear our God. It's in every scripture. He tells us that we should nurture nature. We should care for the creation. He gave us the garden to care for and to keep. And he asked us to replenish, not diminish. 
So just follow scriptural injunction and we won't be bequeathing unto our children a calabash full of poison. God forbid that this shall be our legacy to our children, a calabash full of poison. Instead, it shall be a calabash overflowing with goodness. Uh, okay, that's excellent. That's a good way to wrap it up this morning. Amen. From you? amen. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry, the last point. All of us yeah. must not be on Lucas. Mm. It was a part of this process. Don't say it doesn't affect me. Don't say it doesn't concern me. All right. The situation in Nigeria today is that we say let them do it. We must stop that attitude. Okay. We must not be part of this process. Okay. International negotiator on climate change and sustainable development, Prince Lick of Adina. Thank you very much and thank you very much. Environmental evangelist Desmond Majakodumi. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Happy Easter to both of you. Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So sunrise is now going away and uh, we'll be moving on very quickly through the home stretch now, I reckon. Indeed. Indeed. So don't go away, just hang around.